Hi, welcome to this talk about a new US Department of Defense initiative called 5G to Next G and its potential interest to the open source community. Uh, my name is Samit Roy. I'm a professor of uh, electrical and computer engineering at the University of Washington in Seattle in my regular life. Uh, I'm currently on deputation at the United States Department of Defense as the program lead for initiative of Innovate Beyond 5G. So a bit of background about what 5G means for the US Department of Defense. We all know that 5G is transformational in the sense of its promise for ubiquitous connectivity. Uh, beyond human to human connections, 5G promises an explosion of applications and services that will connect humans to machines as well as machines to machines. Uh, in that sense, 5G is uh, transformational in that it'll create and impact uh, many new sectors. Of specific uh, interest to DOD is the requirement of end-to-end -end system security, i.e. the need to reduce continuously system vulnerabilities and move towards networks based on zero trust principles which is a concept which uh, uh, is uh, worthy of a longer discussion at another time. Finally, DoD networks must also be able to operate through what we call congested and contested environments. In a subsequent slide, we will talk about an upcoming DoD deployment tranche, which means a phase of deployment of enterprise scale 5G networks on selected US spaces where experiments will be conducted for targeted applications to evaluate their end-to-end -end performance and also identify needed network enhancements for future DoD use cases. So uh, some context to this new DoD strategy. Uh, DoD is uh, proactively partnering with commercial industry to allow an understanding and influencing the forthcoming hardware, software, architectural standards and interfaces that will underpin both 5G and beyond 5G technologies. It seeks to do so via collaborative experimentation with both industry and academia. As a result, it hopes to leverage the investments by industry over the next several years, which is an efficient strategy as it implies that DOD can achieve its desired enhancements at marginal cost. Uh, it is obvious that this is uh, a preferred alternative than uh, waiting for industry to fully specify, develop and deploy 5G and then retrofit it for DoD use cases. Past experiences in the areas of uh, micro microelectronics and IT systems has often led DoD far behind in terms of capabilities. And at any rate, commercial industry is unlikely to prioritize features which is of specific interest to DOD. For example, the secure by design or zero trust architectures, uh, features that are uh, mission critical, such as those relating to low latency and ultra high resiliency applications, as well as demonstrating dynamic spectrum access and sharing. So, a bit of uh, information about the upcoming tranche one, which was announced uh, uh, around October 2020. Uh, four initial sites, uh, bases uh, in the US, as noted on this slide, in the states of Washington, Utah, California, and Georgia have been selected. And these will highlight three initial applications or use cases, as uh, shown on the left. These are uh, in order. Uh, augmented and virtual reality. Uh, as you can see, you have uh, uh, troops in a, in a squad or platoon deployed with AR, VR equipment, you know, going about a, a, a war gaming scenario. A second use case is that of smart warehouses, uh, which mimics uh, today's industrial or commercial warehouses with a large density of, of sensors as well as finally an outdoor use case where federal, non-federal spectrum sharing, for example, sh dynamic sharing between a radar 
uh, versus uh, commercial LTE or 5G networks uh, will be explored. Um, these sites will provide uh, access to both the necessary spectrum bands for experimentation, uh, the required wireless uh, access and, and backhaul wired or wireless infrastructure. Uh, it'll present contested communication environments and the ability to uh, showcase dynamic spectrum sharing. Uh, pivoting to why all of this is of relevance to, to the open source community, uh, recall that some of the most interesting features of 5G lie in the new network architecture. Uh, as we know, 5G networks are, are softwareized and modularized. Hence, the architecture moves from the left, which denotes proprietary siloed solutions from a fixed vendor, typically by close interoperations of the software and a preferred hardware. Moving from left to right, where we see more open standard uh, uh, solutions and software uh, being implemented on commodity hardware uh, and uh, via open interfaces. Uh, as we know, uh, the, the right-hand picture enables uh, multi-vendor uh, um, uh, optimization capabilities based on software-defined networking uh, principles, which is shown below. As we know, SDN is based on the separation of control in, in data planes uh, in the uh, lower part of the picture, as well as the notion of a more centralized controller, which has a, an aggregate view of the network and is also programmable by external applications through the northbound interface. Uh, all of this finds uh, uh, realization uh, through the concepts of Network function, uh, network function virtualization, or NFV, as again, the traditional architecture shows network functions being realized on, in closed uh, boxes uh, uh, composed of a integrated hardware and software environment. This will move to increasingly modularized uh, uh, functions uh, uh, deployed by different vendors, which through the virtualization layer will interact or operate on commodity hardware. The result of this will be a more open and competitive marketplace, uh, also optimized by various vendors based on the ability to locate the functions at appropriate points in the network stack. So uh, what is the overall strategy for 5G uh, from the US DoD perspective? First of all, the US uh, uh, DOD uh, seeks to create uh, test beds uh, via public-private par uh, public partnerships. And the, the basic purpose of these test beds, these national test beds, would be to support research development and engineering of all the relevant uh, 5G or beyond 5G dimensions. As already noted, we seek to experiment in different physical terrains uh, in different spectrum, both mid and high bands explore uh, services that are more mission critical, such as ultra reliable, low latency applications, as well as massive machine to machine communications. Uh, we seek to uh, uh, increasingly rely, or as far as possible, fully rely on compliant open source RAN and core instantiations that support network function virtual virtualization and network slicing. And we seek to uh, demonstrate uh, dynamic spectrum sharing between federal and non-federal systems. In summary, uh, the objective is to develop test beds that instantiate using hardware and software reference implementations that will allow end-to-end -end benchmarking of applications that are of relevance to US DOD in scenarios that are of importance to us. All of this we expect will uh, contribute to a, a grand vision or a broader vision of an open, modular, interoperable, and secure 5G and beyond 5G ecosystem enabled with multiple vendors. And specifically, the goals of these labs are itemized as follows. It will prioritize interoperability testing environments for showing plug and play across various 5G vendors and their system components to show resiliency. 
it will standardize a validation and verification framework for different protocols, hardware, and software as part of the design and development process. DoD seeks to invest in these open source software uh, and solutions for end-to-end -end security and open reference hardware design, and of course, contribute to future standardization efforts as well as coordination of the open source working groups. Uh, final slide. Um, this is sort of a last architectural picture of uh, US uh, uh, of DOD's uh, R&D, research and engineering efforts. Um, as indicated on this slide, we seek to create a national 5G lab entity comprising of academia and industry and government. And currently we are in discussions with uh, various open source entities, such as those listed on these slides, notably OAI, the Open Air Interface, as well as the Open RAN Alliance. Thank you for listening, and we I will await for any questions.